Hey, what's going on everyone and thanks so much for tuning into the channel. So around a week ago I found this extremely cool 1957 hardtail Stratocaster body and it really inspired me to build a guitar around it and the idea was to take old 50s and 60s wood and match that with modern day electronics for more reliability and function for me playing shows. So today I just wanted to lay out all the parts and options that we've got and get some feedback from you guys as well. So I've got two 1960s necks here and this one right here has a really unique and rare feature about it that I'll share with you guys in just a minute. Also, I've got a loaded pickup assembly here that my good friend Joel built and he's a master luthier and he basically built this kind of off my suggestions and ideas. So so we will talk about that in just a minute and see what you guys have to say. I don't know, it's it's a little bit different than a traditional setup. Um, but starting with the body, this is a 57 hardtail body. As you can see, there's no tremolo here. And you know, I'm not a huge telly guy. I just haven't been able to bond with one, but I'm thinking this will kind of get me halfway there. And so I really want to see this thing through and and give it a try. What's nice about this body and why I really love some old Fender guitars, especially some of the 50s ones, they can be super lightweight. And so hardtail guitars by design without the bridge block can be super lightweight. But a lot of the 50s guitars happen to be lightweight in the first place. So this guitar and all the parts, I just put them on a scale just to see what they would weigh. And it weighs under seven pounds. Now in terms of the necks, I've got two options here that I'm really considering for this guitar. And the first one, let me show you guys because this is kind of uh, an oddity. So this is a 64 Strat neck. You can see the weird transitional logo that they only did for like two or three years. Has the original uh, Clusons on the back. And this neck is basically in near mint condition. You can see a little bit of wear on the back. And on the bottom here, it's a November 64B neck, which B is the width of the neck. It should be uh, one and five eighths. That was a standard fender neck size, which would be 1.625 inches. But I've got my calipers right here so I can show you guys. The nut on this guitar is 1.7 inches. And like I was saying, I've sent photos of this guitar neck off to um, some friends of mine who are experts and they have never ever seen this before. So C neck would be one and three fourths and then a D neck would be even larger than that. But this neck is within the realm of a C neck size even though it has a B stamp on it. A Gibson size neck is one and 11 sixteenths smaller than this nut size. So this is definitely uh, one off and uh, the only explanation I could get was that it was probably a mistake, something slipped through the cracks. Basically, nobody can really explain it, but it's also near 0.9 inches at the first fret and an, a full inch at the 12th fret, so it's this is like as deep as my 57 V-neck. So uh, this neck is very unusual, I think paired with the hardtail, maybe this could be a really cool combination. I've also refretted it myself with uh, 6105 frets, and so this thing is pretty much ready to go and I'm really leaning on using this neck uh, for the guitar. The second option I've got here, which I just got in, is a 1966 neck, which definitely has a vibe to it and uh, it's got some extreme checking really that's incredibly cool. It's an August 66 neck, so it's a pretty early big headstock. These are um, the last of the, the nitro necks. If I don't use this neck on the guitar, then I probably will get rid of it. So if you guys are looking for an original condition, no extra holes, 60s neck that's in nitro, this is about as good as you will get for the money. Uh, with the big headstock, this one is about three or four ounces heavier than the smaller headstock. So, you know, um, 
trying to keep the weight down as much as I can to really make it noticeable. Uh, this is this is really a better option. Over here, this is the original neck plate that came with the body. It's a, a dash neck plate, which is a weird thing that was happening, I think, just around 1957. Uh, you could get one of these. And then, ironically, the serial number is 1959-9. I don't know. Um, and then we have the electronics here, which I'm not sure what you guys are going to say about this, so I hope you will leave me a comment and... Uh, and let me know your full opinion of this. But my friend Joel built it, and he is literally the one of the smartest dudes I know in guitars and anything else. I told him I was wanting something a little bit more modern, but remaining in the vintage world, you know? So what he did was he built me two kind of uh, regular black bottom form bar wiring pickups closely based on my 59 for example but with just slightly more output because the bridge pickup here is like a super modified um, kind of tele pickup and I don't exactly know all the details about this but we do have a base plate here it's kind of based on like an early tele broadcaster pickup so it's a flat pole pickup and there's some there's some extra mojo going on uh, with this as well. So I'm really excited to try this out with a hardtail and see what happens. Also, this might be uh, where I lose you guys on this one because, well, first we got a five-way switch, which is a must-have for me. I put five ways in all my guitars. But also we've got these very interesting pots here. And for the life of me, I can't remember what he called them, but it was like conductive polymer pots. Basically, these are like uh, an encased pot that will not be corroded or damaged and basically last a lifetime. They also have a slightly different taper, like you can get them in all different kinds, and he's selected these for what he thinks I will like. They're super smooth, you know, I, I don't know what you guys are going to say if the tone freaks out there if they, you know, will argue that, that this is a bad idea. I don't know, I'm super excited to see this. Joel told me that he puts these in a lot of pro players guitars because they last forever you can put your you know original vintage pots away and get something that's never gonna be scratchy or break down on stage and that's basically what I was looking for so this seems like a good idea um, he's also selected some tone caps here to kind of match the pickup selection that I got going on and then also kind of a specific treble bleed that I've been using because my, my friend Nick put it in my 59 and I don't necessarily know the value, but all I can say is that it is a cap and resistor setup. Without a treble bleed, you roll the volume down and you lose a lot of the sparkly highs. Um, so this one, it kind of just retains the highs a little bit, but it doesn't go overboard on that. So, And then I've got a setup here of a, a 50 single ply guard and all of these knobs and covers and everything here uh, are from 50s, late 50s guitar, just parts that I've been holding on to for a while. So I think that's going to be all the parts that we need. I've got the screws for the neck plate. The output jack is original. It's already here. The strap buttons are here. And both these necks come with the original tuner. So that's everything we are going to need. And I'm really hoping this is going to be cool. A lightweight hardtail with 50s, 60s wood and you know basically a hot rotted uh, electronic setup. So if you guys have a better idea or if you have an opinion on what I should do here with the current options then please leave a comment and let me know. One thing I want to do in the coming days is try to locate the body date inside these cavities. I'm a little worried because I did find some examples of hardtails online where they didn't have a body date. Hopefully that's not the case but uh, there should be a body date in the, either in the neck or middle pickup so I'm going to do my best to find that and put that in a video if it is there. If it's not, then uh, SOL, I guess. Oh, and a shameless plug, if you guys didn't see the video on this incredible blue Firebird, please go check it out. I will link it down below, but this thing is literally insane and uh, a lot more videos to come on this. I think that's about it, guys. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in and uh, giving me a place to do cool little projects like this. It really is fun for me and I enjoy having this platform to do it. So I hope you all stay safe out there. There's always just crazy stuff going on in the news, it seems like. I try my best to keep a positive outlook and do what I can, all right? That's all we can do sometimes, so peace. Mm -hmm.